בשם השם נעשה ונצליח. שלום וברכה חברים יקרים, you're never gonna believe it. The Christian missionaries, one for Israel, Eitan and Moti, Anastasia, the rest of the team, they're attacking us and they're lying again. Well, actually you are gonna believe it because missionaries have been doing that for about 2,000 years. Well, let the show go on. About a year ago, on February 28, 2021, we released a short film, which was an excerpt of an older lecture, where I told the story of Rabbi Daniel Lasor, telling that told the story to my rabbi, Rabbi Frank Kachlon, where he met with Eitan uh, Bar and uh, Moti at a uh, cafe where they had a debate, and after that debate, they, uh, they they you know the missionaries of course lost the debate and they got violent and they uh, uh, the expression that I use they uh, tried to break his bones. Now, of course, I didn't say they actually beat him up, and anyone that watches the film, which is called What Happened When Missionaries Won for Israel Met Rabbi Daniel Asor, Be'ezot Hashem film. I didn't say they actually beat him up, but I used the expression that's very common among us, the Middle Eastern, Sephardics, especially Israelis. Nonetheless, this is not the first time anybody's used that expression, but I said they tried to break his bones. Never actually say they beat him up, but the missionaries, they took that as that. They said that I did say that they beat him up, and I am a liar. And they came out with a video about a month and a half later, on April 6th, where they said that I have uh, maliciously lied about them. I said that they beat him up. Uh, they, uh, you know, they're victims. They, uh, they, this is another example of how the uh, the rabbis are lying about uh, about the uh, the Christians in order to slow them down, and on and on and on and on and on. Just simply the same show over and over again, where the missionaries play victim while actually being the perpetrator, the missionaries lying about being liars. So, this happened a year ago. And of course, we didn't have a, uh, a response video to it. We didn't respond to it at all. We simply just let people see what the truth is and decide for themselves. Of course, many people contacted me because these guys, spent a ton of money, a ton of money to market this video of theirs, which was publishing our video. Why would you do such a thing? If you notice the statistics, which we're going to put on the screen, anyone that's familiar with, you know, launching videos on the internet and so on knows that the first week or so after you launch a video is when you're going to get the majority of your, of your views. So after the first week that we launched this video, our video, I got about 3,300 views. It's a not bad, Baruch Hashem, that's what we got. Now, after that week, it died out. So for the next month and a half or so, which was the time period between that and when they launched their video on April 6th, well, it only got a couple of hundred more views. So by the time they actually launched their video on April 6th, the video, our video got 3,750 views. Now, after that, after they launched their video, and you see over the next couple of months, in fact, our video woke up again as a result of their video and doubled its views, got another 3,700 views. So in essence, their video market on our video even better than what we do for ourselves. And over the next year since then, it continued increasing as their video continued increasing. Now, what's the difference? Their video got over 106,000 views to date. We're now in February of 2022. Their video has 106,000 views. Our video has about 10,000 views. So we're talking about a factor of 10, 10 to 1. Now, why would they spend so much effort, time, uh, a, uh, resources, money to market this video if it was so damaging to hear what I said, that they supposedly beat him up? If anything, you should quiet it down. You should uh, uh, not market it. I mean, technically, my video already died out by the time you marketed yours. Well, let me tell you a secret about these missionaries. Their whole job is to try to gain as much uh, content as possible where that content has to do with any dialogue they have with the rabbinical world. So the whole purpose behind them spending a fortune, we're talking about tens of thousands of dollars probably, uh, is in order to gain more content, in order to make themselves look like victims, in order to look like make us look like evil people, and 
to show how they are doing the right thing they are righteous and we are wicked well today we're going to show you another real version of what they really are and i promise you it has nothing to do with righteous first and foremost you should know statistically as i said their video marketed ours why would you do such a thing well if you want to if you want to if you have an agenda the first agenda was to show that i was a liar we're going to prove that otherwise in a moment second was that they actually said that uh they were obviously hurt by this whole thing and uh that uh this happened recently that part of my lie was that i said that this meeting between them and the rabbi daniel saw was recently now everyone that follows my videos knows that we take excerpts of older lectures and uh and make them into short films so the uh everyone understood that this film didn't just happen right there and then it's a uh, but what did they do to make people believe that they took a uh short clip of one of my recent videos and they added it to their video so if you notice my video okay the actual film itself that we published and you should see their version of my video you'll see that their version is slightly different what's different they added a picture in picture and in that picture in picture you see me talking so it looks like it's the current version of me it's the more recent version of me that changed looks a little bit over the last few years and you see how oh this this must have happened five minutes ago why because again it adds to it adds to the uh to the feel to the feel that they are the victims and we are the liars but of course once you actually notice that there is a uh, uh this is not authentic you realize who's the liar The other thing is that they mentioned that uh, they got a testimony from Rabbi Daniel Asor that he agrees with them that I'm a liar. He said that I'm a liar. Daniel Asor wrote me back and verified in writing that this is an untrue story, a myth, actually using the word a lie. Well, good news is, is that we had to double check that. Did he actually in fact say I'm a liar? Well, let's see. Rabbi Daniel Asor heard, you know, told the story to my rabbi, Rabbi Frank Kachlum. I don't know Rabbi Daniel Asor personally. I've only spoken to him a couple of times in my life, but uh, uh, that was many years ago. But as far as a, uh, as far as this whole story it was really between him and Rabbi Ephraim. So right after they published this video, we reached out. Rabbi Ephraim reached out to him, and they had a uh, communication via WhatsApp. And what did Rabbi Daniel Asor say? You're going to hear it in a moment, and that's the that's the key. You're going to hear him saying it. And he's going to say what actually transpired, that they had the debate. After the debate, Eitan Bar did get physically threatening, bumping his chest into uh, aggressively into Rabbi Daniel Asor as if uh, trying to uh, uh, implicate that he wants to fight him. Rabbi Daniel Asor had to restrain him by taking his two hands and putting them together. Of course, trying to uh, stop something from getting out of hand because he was getting threatening. He was getting violent. And this, Rabotai, is what the missionaries don't want you to believe. So how could it be that Rabbi Daniel Asor called me a liar? He called the story a lie. What's the story a lie? They told him that I said that they hit him. So he said... That's not the truth. That's a lie. You didn't hit me. So, of course, the question they asked, or they, the, what they said, their statement, which is, in essence, a lie about what I said, is that, yes, they said I, that he, uh, they hit him. He said, no, that's a lie. You didn't hit me. Every, you know, you didn't hit me. But the good news is, I didn't say they hit him. I said they tried, so they got aggressive. And that's why he answered the way he answered. And that's why we had to get this on recording not some hearsay you're gonna hear it from rabbi daniel asor הם פנו אליי וטענו שאתם פרסמתם שאתם שברתם לי את העצמות שהם שברו לי את העצמות 
שמרביצו לי מכות, אז אני אמרתי שזה לא כך, שאני לא סיפרתי את הסיפור כך. נכון, הייתי עם שומרי ראש, הרב, היה שם, ברב, היה שם יחיעם, מנהל המחלקה נגד נצרות, היה שם בנימין קלוגר. נכון, מה זה החל להתלהם? אני, כשאני אומר, הוא החל להתלהם, נכון, הוא ניסה, כאילו, הוא בא עם החזה שלו, ו, 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 ונכון, אני הצמדתי לו את הידיים, אבל זה לא... לשבור את העצמות, זה לא להרביץ מכות, זה לא... לא הוא לא תקף, מה זה תקף? זה, זה מה שהיה, אני מספר לך בדיוק מה היה, תקרא לזה איך שאתה רוצה לקרוא לזה. זה הכל, הוא, נכון, הוא התחיל להתלהם, הוא בא עם החזה שלו ונצמדתי לו את הידיים, זה הכל. וחשבתי שלכן לא ראוי להיפגש איתו שוב פעם. כל העניין היה אם להיפגש איתו שוב או לא, כשהוא ביקש להיפגש לוויכוח, ואמרתי שאין מה להיפגש עם בן אדם כזה, שאז הוא היה בחור צעיר והיום הוא, לא יודע, כבר עושה דוקטורט בתחום, אבל טענתי שזה יהיה חיול השם לחשוף את הסטודנטים מאוניברסיטת תל אביב לוויכוח מהסוג הזה, לתת לו במה. ואדם ש... התנהג לא, לא ראוי לדעתי בסוף המפגש הזה, לא שווה להיפגש איתו וגם לא שווה לתת לו במה, זה הכל. I've been sitting on this for over a year because there was simply no reason to expose this to the public. I had a couple of close students that knew about it. The rest of the people there was simply no reason. But now there is a reason. It's time to show the real face of the lying, filthy, filthy, lying missionaries, Eitan and Moti, from One for Israel and the rest of their staff. Ba'uch Adonai Amen ve'amen.